Lesson 1, Real Estate Adventures Hi Anna, have you ever bought a house before? Hi John. Yes, I actually just bought my first house last year. It was quite an adventure. Really? That's amazing. Did you use a real estate agent or did you find it through an online listing? I actually found it through an online listing. I spent hours browsing different websites and looking at pictures of houses. That sounds exciting. How did you know which house was the right one for you? Well, I made a list of my must-haves and nice-to-haves. Then, I narrowed down the options based on my budget and location preferences. That's a smart approach. Did you visit the houses in person before making a decision? Yes, definitely. I scheduled appointments with the sellers and visited each house to get a feel for the space and see if it matched my expectations. I can imagine that was quite a process. Were there any challenges along the way? Oh, definitely. Sometimes the houses looked completely different in person than they did in the pictures. It was important to pay attention to the details. I can see how that could be tricky. Did you negotiate the price with the seller? Absolutely. I made an offer below the asking price and negotiated with the seller until we reached a price that we were both comfortable with. That's impressive. Did you have any help from professionals during the buying process? Yes, I hired a home inspector to ensure that the house was in good condition and didn't have any hidden problems. That's a wise decision. It sounds like you had quite an adventure buying your house. Oh, it was definitely an adventure. But in the end, it was worth it. I love my new home. I'm glad to hear that. It sounds like you learned a lot through the process. Absolutely. Buying a house is a big decision, but with careful planning and research, it can be a rewarding experience. I'll definitely keep that in mind when I decide to buy a house in the future. Thanks for sharing your experience. You're welcome. If you ever need any advice or have more questions, feel free to ask. I appreciate that. I'll definitely reach out to you when the time comes. Thanks again. Lesson 2, Destination Dilemma Hi Anna, have you decided where you want to go on your next vacation? Hi John. I haven't decided yet. I'm considering somewhere close by, like the beach. What about you? Oh, I love the beach but I'm also considering exploring a big city. I can't decide between the two. Well, going to the beach can be so relaxing. You can lay in the sun, swim in the ocean, and enjoy the beautiful scenery. That sounds amazing. I could really use some relaxation. But on the other hand, exploring a big city can be so exciting. There are always new things to see and do.
That's true. In a big city, you can visit museums, go shopping, try different cuisines, and experience the vibrant city life. Yes, the options are endless. I love the idea of trying different cuisines and immersing myself in the local culture. Absolutely. Trying new foods is one of the best parts of traveling. You get to taste flavors that you've never experienced before. That's so true. But then again, there's something so calming about being by the beach, feeling the sand between your toes, and listening to the sound of the waves. I completely agree. The beach has a way of making you feel at peace and allowing you to disconnect from the busy world. That's exactly what I need right now, a peaceful escape. Maybe the beach is the perfect choice for me. It sounds like it could be. Plus, you can engage in water activities like surfing, snorkeling, or simply taking long walks along the shore. That does sound appealing. I can already picture myself enjoying the sunsets and building sandcastles. It's a wonderful image. But don't forget about the city's vibrant nightlife and the chance to meet new people and make lasting memories. You're right. Both options have their own unique charms. Maybe I should try to find a destination that combines both the beach and the city. That's a great idea. There are some places that offer the best of both worlds, where you can relax by the beach during the day and explore the city's attractions at night. That sounds like the perfect compromise. I'll definitely look into those destinations. Thanks for the suggestion. You're welcome. I hope you find the perfect destination that fulfills all your vacation desires. I appreciate that. I'll make sure to let you know where I end up going. Maybe you can join me too. That would be fantastic. I'm always up for an adventure. Just let me know, and I'll be there. Thank you. I'll keep you posted. Here's to finding the perfect vacation spot. Lesson 3, Budget-Friendly Accommodation Hi Anna, I'm planning a trip and I need to find a central hotel. Do you have any suggestions for affordable yet comfortable options? Hi John. Sure, I can help you with that. Prices can vary, but there are a few budget-friendly hotels in the city center that you might want to consider. That would be great. I want to make sure I stay within my budget without compromising on comfort or location. I understand. One option could be to check online travel websites. They often offer discounted rates for hotels in popular areas. That's a good idea. I'll definitely browse through those websites and compare prices. Do you have any other suggestions? Another option is to consider staying in a hostel or a guest house. They are usually more affordable and can still provide a comfortable stay. I've heard about hostels, but I'm not sure if they are suitable for me. Are they safe and clean? Yes, many hostels have private rooms available, so you can still have your own space. 
and most hostels prioritize cleanliness and security. That's good to know. I'll keep that in mind as an alternative. Any other tips for finding affordable accommodation? One more tip is to consider staying slightly outside the city center. Hotels in the outskirts are often cheaper, and you can still easily access the main attractions through public transportation. That's a clever idea. It would help me save some money while still being conveniently located. I'll look into that too. Great. I'm glad I could help. Remember to read reviews and check the amenities offered by the hotels you consider. That way, you can make an informed decision. Absolutely. I'll make sure to read reviews and check for amenities that are important to me, like free Wi-Fi or breakfast. Wise choice. By doing thorough research, you can find a hotel that meets your needs and fits your budget perfectly. Thank you for all the suggestions. I feel more confident now in finding a budget-friendly yet centrally located hotel. Lesson 4, Shopping List and Task Division Hi Anna, I think it's time to do some grocery shopping. Great. Let's prepare a shopping list and divide the tasks then. Hi John. That sounds like a plan. We can start by making a list of all the items we need. Do you have a pen and paper? I have a pen, but I'll need to find some paper. In the meantime, why don't you start brainstorming the items we should include? Sure. Let's start with the basics like fruits, vegetables, dairy products, and meat. We can also add pantry staples like rice, pasta, and canned goods. Good idea. We should also include cleaning supplies, toiletries, and any other household items we may need. Absolutely. And don't forget about snacks and beverages, like chips, cookies, and drinks for when we want to relax. Right. Let's make sure we cover all our meals, including breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We can add cereal, bread, eggs, and other breakfast essentials. That's a good point. We should also consider any special dietary needs or preferences we have, so we can include suitable options. Definitely. Once we have the list ready, we can divide the tasks. How about you handle the produce and dairy sections? Sounds good. I'll take care of selecting fresh fruits, vegetables, and dairy products. And why don't you handle the meat and pantry items? Sure, I can do that. I'll make sure to choose good quality meat and stock up on pantry essentials like rice, pasta, and canned goods. Perfect. We also need to think about the non-food items. How about I take care of the cleaning supplies and toiletries? That works for me. And I'll handle any other household items we need, like light bulbs or batteries. Sounds like a plan. Once we finish shopping, we can meet up and split the bill accordingly. Absolutely. We'll keep the receipts and divide the total expenses between us. That way, it's fair and transparent.
Agreed. It's important to keep track of our expenses and make sure we're both contributing equally. Exactly. It's all about teamwork and cooperation. We can support each other and make the shopping process more efficient. Definitely. It's always more fun and productive when we work together. Let's get started on that shopping list. Absolutely. I'll go find some paper, and we can start jotting down the items we need. This is going to be a successful shopping trip. I'm excited. Let's make sure we cover everything on our list and enjoy the process. Happy shopping, partner! Thank you. I appreciate your enthusiasm. Let's make this a productive and enjoyable shopping experience. Here's to a well-prepared shopping list. Lesson 5, Shopping Tips and Recommendations Hi Anna, I'm planning to go shopping today. I have a few items on my list, but I'm open to suggestions. Of course, I'll keep an eye out for those as well. Hi John. That's great. Shopping can be fun, especially when you discover new items. Let me know what's on your list, and I'll see if I have any recommendations for you. Sure. I need to buy some new clothes for the upcoming season. I'm looking for comfortable yet stylish options. That sounds exciting. Have you considered checking out some thrift stores or secondhand shops? They often have unique and affordable clothing items. That's a great idea. I haven't thought about thrift stores, but I'm definitely open to finding some hidden gems there. You might be surprised by what you can find. Thrift stores are a great way to add some personality to your wardrobe without breaking the bank. I like the idea of adding some unique pieces to my wardrobe. I'll definitely give thrift stores a chance. Any other shopping tips? Another tip is to keep an eye out for sales and discounts. Many stores have seasonal or clearance sales, which can help you save money. That's a good point. I'll make sure to check for any ongoing sales or promotions before making my purchases. Additionally, don't forget to try things on before buying them. It's important to make sure the clothes fit well and are comfortable. Absolutely. Trying on clothes is crucial to ensure a good fit. I'll take my time and make sure the clothes I choose are the right size. And if you're looking for specific brands or items, you can also consider shopping online. Many websites offer a wide range of options and deliver right to your doorstep. Online shopping is convenient, especially when you're looking for something specific. I'll keep that in mind if I can't find what I need in physical stores. That's a good approach. Online shopping opens up a whole world of possibilities. Just remember to read reviews and check the sizing information before making a purchase. Absolutely. I'll do my research and make informed decisions. Thank you for the shopping tips and recommendations. I appreciate it. Lesson 6, Expressing Individuality Hi Anna, 
I've been thinking about the different ways we can express our individuality. Isn't it fascinating how we can showcase our uniqueness through various means? Hi John. Absolutely. It's wonderful to see how each person has their own distinct style, interests, and talents. It definitely adds excitement to life. Definitely. It's always exciting to explore different avenues to express ourselves. Whether it's through fashion, hobbies, or even the way we decorate our living spaces. Absolutely. Fashion is a great way to showcase our individuality. The clothes we wear can reflect our personality and make a statement about who we are. That's true. I believe that fashion is an art form, and we can use it to express our creativity and personal taste. It's like wearing our personality on the outside. I couldn't agree more. Our hobbies and interests also play a significant role in expressing our individuality. For example, if we have a passion for photography, we can capture the world through our unique lens. Exactly. Our hobbies provide an outlet for self-expression and allow us to explore our interests. Whether it's painting, playing an instrument, or even cooking, these activities reflect our individuality. Absolutely. And let's not forget about the way we decorate our living spaces. Our choice of colors, furniture, and artwork can create a unique atmosphere that represents our personal style. That's a great point. Our living spaces are an extension of ourselves, and they should reflect our tastes and preferences. It's like creating our own little world. Definitely. Another way to express individuality is through the books we read and the movies we watch. These choices can provide insight into our interests and values. I agree. The stories we choose to immerse ourselves in can shape our perspectives and ignite our imagination. It's like a window into our souls. Absolutely. And let's not forget about the power of our words. The way we communicate, the language we use, and the ideas we express all contribute to our individuality. You're right. Our words have the ability to inspire, influence, and make a lasting impact. They are a reflection of our unique thoughts and experiences. Indeed. It's fascinating how every individual has their own story to tell. Our experiences, challenges, and triumphs make us who we are, and sharing those stories is another way to express our individuality. Absolutely. Our stories are a part of us, and by sharing them, we open up new avenues for connection and understanding. It's a beautiful way to celebrate our individuality. It truly is. Embracing our individuality not only brings joy to our own lives, but also enriches the lives of those around us. It's a gift we can share with the world. Well said. Our individuality is what makes us unique and special. Let's continue to explore and express ourselves in different ways, celebrating the beauty of our own individuality. Lesson 7, Celebrating Special Occasions Hi Anna, I've been thinking about how important it is to celebrate and acknowledge special occasions. Absolutely, let's make sure they feel appreciated and valued on their special day. 
Hi John. I couldn't agree more. Celebrating special occasions allows us to show our love and appreciation for the people in our lives. It's a wonderful way to make them feel special. Definitely. Birthdays, anniversaries, and other milestones give us the opportunity to express our gratitude and create lasting memories. It's important to make these moments count. Absolutely. One way to celebrate is by giving thoughtful gifts. It's not about the material value, but rather the sentiment behind the gift that matters. That's true. A well-thought-out gift shows that we've put effort and consideration into choosing something meaningful. It's a way to show our love and appreciation. And let's not forget about the power of words. Sending heartfelt messages, writing a thoughtful card, or even dedicating a poem can make a significant impact. You're right. Words have the ability to touch the heart and convey our deepest emotions. It's a beautiful way to let someone know how much they mean to us. Absolutely. Another way to celebrate is by spending quality time together. Planning a special outing or organizing a gathering allows us to create cherished memories. That's true. Time is a precious gift, and dedicating it to someone on their special day shows how much we value their presence in our lives. It's about creating unforgettable experiences. Indeed. Celebrations also provide an opportunity to indulge in delicious food and drinks. Whether it's a homemade meal or dining out at a favorite restaurant, it adds to the festive atmosphere. Absolutely. Food has a way of bringing people together and creating a joyful ambience. It's a way to celebrate not just the occasion but also the joys of life itself. And let's not forget about the importance of surprises. Planning something unexpected, like a surprise party or a small gesture, can make the occasion even more memorable. You're absolutely right. Surprises add an element of excitement and anticipation to the celebration. They show that we've gone the extra mile to make someone's day truly special. Definitely. Lastly, it's important to remember that celebrations are not limited to big occasions. Everyday moments and achievements also deserve recognition and appreciation. That's a great point. Celebrating the small victories and milestones in life reminds us to find joy in the little things and appreciate the journey. Absolutely. So, let's make a conscious effort to celebrate the people and moments that bring happiness into our lives. Everyone deserves to feel loved and cherished on their special day. I couldn't agree more. Let's make sure to create meaningful celebrations that leave a lasting impression. Thank you for the insightful conversation. Lesson 8, Exploring Vibrant Cities Hi Anna, I've been researching different cities to visit, and I'm leaning towards London. It seems like such a vibrant and historic city. Hi John. London is a fantastic choice. It's a city that offers a unique blend of history, culture, and modernity. There's so much to explore and experience there. Absolutely. I've heard that London has a rich history, with iconic landmarks like the Tower of London and Buckingham Palace. It would be incredible to see them in person. 
yes, those landmarks are truly magnificent. But London is not just about its history. It's also a hub for art and culture. You can visit world-class museums like the British Museum or the Tate Modern. That's true. The art scene in London is renowned, and I would love to immerse myself in the vibrant artistic atmosphere. It's a city that nurtures creativity and innovation. Definitely. And let's not forget about the diverse culinary scene in London. From traditional British pubs to international cuisine, there's something to satisfy every palate. I'm excited to try the famous fish and chips and explore the local food markets. London is known for its culinary delights, and I can't wait to indulge in the flavors of the city. Sounds delicious. Another great thing about London is its theater scene. The West End is home to world-class productions, and watching a play or a musical there would be an unforgettable experience. Absolutely. The West End is renowned for its top-notch performances, and I would love to witness the magic of live theater in such an iconic setting. It's a must-do in London. And let's not forget about the beautiful parks and green spaces. Hyde Park and Kensington Gardens are perfect for a leisurely stroll or a picnic on a sunny day. That sounds wonderful. Exploring the parks would be a great way to enjoy nature and take a break from the vibrant city atmosphere. London truly offers a diverse range of experiences. Absolutely. It's a city where tradition meets innovation, and there's always something new and exciting happening. You'll never run out of things to see and do in London. I'm really looking forward to immersing myself in the vibrant energy of the city and experiencing the unique blend of history, culture, and modernity. London seems like a place that has it all. It definitely does. London has a charm that captivates visitors from all over the world. I'm sure you'll have an amazing time exploring the city and creating unforgettable memories. Thank you. I appreciate your insights and enthusiasm about London. I can't wait to embark on this adventure and discover the wonders of the city. Lesson 9, Persuasive Requests Hi Anna, I've been thinking about how to make a persuasive request. It's important to have evidence to support your request. Absolutely, let's make sure we're equipped with the right tools to make a compelling case. Hi John. I couldn't agree more. When making a request, having strong evidence and supporting arguments can significantly increase the chances of success. It's about presenting a compelling case. Definitely. One way to support your request is by providing relevant data and statistics. Numbers can help illustrate the importance or impact of what you're asking for. That's true. Data can add credibility and demonstrate the need for your request. It's important to find reliable sources and present the information in a clear and concise manner. Absolutely. Another way to support your request is by sharing personal experiences or anecdotes. Real-life stories can make an emotional connection and highlight the significance of your request. You're right. Personal experiences add a human touch to your request and can make it more relatable. It helps others understand why your request matters on a deeper level.
That's a great point. Additionally, providing examples or case studies can be persuasive. It shows that your request has been successful in similar situations or contexts. Definitely. Examples and case studies demonstrate the feasibility and potential positive outcomes of your request. It gives others confidence in supporting what you're asking for. Absolutely. Another effective way to support your request is by showcasing testimonials or endorsements. If you can gather support from respected individuals or organizations, it adds credibility to your cause. That's true. Testimonials and endorsements provide social proof and show that others believe in the value of your request. It's a powerful way to gain support and influence decisions. You're absolutely right. Additionally, it's important to anticipate and address any potential objections or concerns. By proactively answering questions or providing solutions, you can alleviate doubts and increase the chances of a positive response. Definitely. Being prepared to address objections shows that you've thought through your request and are committed to finding solutions. It demonstrates your dedication and increases the likelihood of a favorable outcome. Absolutely. Lastly, it's important to maintain a respectful and persuasive tone throughout your request. Use language that is clear, concise, and polite. It's about making a compelling case while being considerate of others' perspectives. That's a great point. Communicating respectfully and choosing the right words can make a significant difference in how your request is received. It shows that you value the opinions and concerns of others. Thank you. I appreciate your insights on making persuasive requests. With the right evidence and a thoughtful approach, we can increase our chances of getting a positive response. Lesson 10, Time Management Mastery. Hi Anna, I've been thinking about improving my time management skills. It's crucial to make the most of our day. Hi John. Time management is indeed essential. It helps us stay organized, be more productive, and achieve our goals. What strategies are you considering? I've read that setting clear priorities and creating a to-do list can be helpful. By knowing what tasks are most important, we can focus on them and ensure they get done. That's a great start. Prioritizing tasks allows us to allocate our time and energy effectively. It's about distinguishing between what's urgent and what's important. Absolutely. Another strategy is to eliminate distractions. By minimizing interruptions like phone notifications or social media, we can stay focused and complete tasks more efficiently. You're right. Distractions can eat up a significant amount of our time. Creating a conducive work environment and setting boundaries can help us stay on track. That's true. Another technique I've come across is the Pomodoro technique. It involves working in short bursts, typically 25 minutes, followed by a short break. It helps maintain focus and productivity. That's an excellent technique. Breaking our work into manageable chunks can increase our productivity and prevent burnout. It's about finding a rhythm that works for us. Absolutely. I've also found that delegating tasks when possible can be beneficial. 
By assigning certain responsibilities to others, we can free up our time for more important or strategic work. That's a great point. Delegating not only helps distribute the workload, but also allows us to leverage the strengths and expertise of others. It's about working smarter, not harder. Definitely. Another aspect of time management is scheduling. By allocating specific time slots for different activities, we can ensure that important tasks are given the attention they deserve. You're absolutely right. Scheduling helps create structure and prevents tasks from falling through the cracks. It also helps us make the most of our productive hours. Absolutely. Additionally, it's important to take regular breaks and recharge. Stepping away from work for a short while can actually boost our productivity and creativity when we return. That's true. Breaks are not a waste of time, they're necessary for our well-being and mental clarity. It's important to find the right balance between work and rest. You're absolutely right. Another technique I've found helpful is the Eisenhower matrix. It involves categorizing tasks based on their urgency and importance, helping us prioritize effectively. That's an excellent technique. The Eisenhower matrix helps us make informed decisions about how we spend our time and energy. It's about being intentional and strategic. Definitely. Lastly, it's important to review and reflect on our time management practices regularly. By identifying what works and what needs improvement, we can refine our approach and become more efficient. You're absolutely right. Continuous improvement is key when it comes to time management. It's about adapting and finding strategies that align with our individual needs and preferences. Thank you. I appreciate your insights on time management. With these strategies in mind, I'm confident that I can make the most of my day and achieve my goals. Lesson 11, Travel Essentials. Hi Anna, I've been thinking about our upcoming trip. That's convenient. Don't forget to bring your driver's license and credit card. Hi John. Absolutely, travel essentials are crucial. I'll make sure to pack my driver's license and credit card, among other things. What other items do you consider essential? Well, a valid passport is definitely a must-have when traveling internationally. It's important to check its expiration date and ensure it's valid for the duration of our trip. That's true. A valid passport is essential for international travel. I'll make sure to check its expiration date and renew it if needed. What about travel insurance? Travel insurance is a good idea, especially for longer trips or when visiting unfamiliar destinations. It provides coverage for unforeseen events like medical emergencies or trip cancellations. You're right. Travel insurance can provide peace of mind and financial protection. I'll look into purchasing a travel insurance policy before our trip. Great! Another important item to bring is a universal adapter. It allows us to charge our electronic devices in different countries with varying power outlets. That's essential, especially since different countries have different plug types. I'll make sure to pack a universal adapter so we can keep our devices charged. 
Definitely. It's also a good idea to have a copy of our travel itinerary and important documents like hotel reservations, flight tickets, and contact information. It helps us stay organized. That's a great point. Having a printed or digital copy of our itinerary and important documents can be very useful, especially if we encounter any issues during our trip. Absolutely. Another essential item is a reliable travel bag or suitcase. It should be durable, secure, and able to accommodate all our belongings comfortably. You're right. A good travel bag or suitcase is essential for a smooth travel experience. I'll make sure to choose one that meets our needs and provides sufficient space. That's important. Additionally, don't forget to pack any necessary medications, toiletries, and personal care items. It's always better to have them on hand during our trip. Definitely. I'll make a checklist of all the medications and personal care items I need to bring. It's important to be prepared and have everything we need while traveling. Absolutely. Lastly, it's a good idea to do some research about the local customs, traditions, and any specific cultural norms of the place we're visiting. It helps us navigate and respect the local culture. That's true. Being aware of the local customs and cultural norms can help us have a more enriching and respectful travel experience. I'll make sure to do some research beforehand. Thank you. I appreciate your insights on travel essentials. With these items in mind, we can have a smooth and enjoyable trip. Lesson 12, Making Smart Choices Hi Anna, I've been looking at our options for the upcoming event. Options with convenient timings that make sense are important. Hi John. Absolutely, making smart choices is crucial. It's important to consider various factors when selecting the best option. What specific aspects are you looking at? Well, one important factor is the location. It should be easily accessible and preferably close to public transportation. That way, it's convenient for everyone attending. That's true. Easy accessibility and proximity to public transportation are key considerations. It ensures that participants can reach the venue without much hassle. Definitely. Another factor to consider is the cost. We should compare different options and choose the one that offers the best value for our budget. You're right. Cost-effectiveness is important. We need to evaluate the services or benefits provided by each option and determine if they align with our budget. Absolutely. It's also important to consider the reputation and reviews of the providers or organizers. Positive feedback and recommendations can give us confidence in our choice. That's a great point. Checking reviews and testimonials can provide valuable insights into the quality and reliability of the service or event. It helps us make an informed decision. Definitely. Additionally, timing plays a crucial role. We should consider the dates and schedule of the event to ensure it doesn't conflict with other commitments. You're right. Considering our availability and any other engagements is important to avoid overlapping schedules. It allows us to fully commit to and enjoy the chosen option.
that's true. Another aspect to consider is the overall experience or value we'll gain from the event or service. We should assess if it aligns with our goals and expectations. Absolutely. It's important to evaluate the potential benefits and outcomes. Will the event or service provide us with valuable knowledge, networking opportunities, or personal growth? Definitely. It's also worth considering any additional features or perks offered by the options. Sometimes, certain extras or bonuses can enhance the overall experience. That's a great point. Bonus features or special offers can add value to the chosen option. We should evaluate if they align with our preferences and enhance the overall experience. Absolutely. Lastly, we should trust our intuition. Sometimes, even if all the factors seem favorable, our gut feeling can guide us towards the best choice. You're right. Intuition can play a significant role in decision making. We should listen to our instincts and choose the option that feels right to us. Thank you. I appreciate your insights on making smart choices. With these factors in mind, we can select the most suitable option for our needs. Lesson 13, Powering Up, Consider Battery Life. Hi Anna, I've been researching smartphones, and I'm torn between two models. They both have great features, but I'm not sure which one to choose. What do you think? Hi John. Choosing a smartphone can be challenging. Besides features, have you considered the battery life of each model? That's a good point. I want a phone that can last throughout the day without constantly needing to be recharged. Absolutely. Battery life is crucial for a seamless user experience. Have you checked the specifications of both phones regarding their battery capacity? Yes, I've compared the battery sizes, but I'm not sure how it translates into actual usage. Is there a way to estimate battery performance? One way to gauge battery life is by checking the MA, milliampere hour, rating. Generally, a higher MA rating indicates a longer lasting battery. Ah, uh, I see. So, the higher the MA rating, the longer the battery will last. That's good to know. What else should I consider regarding battery life? Apart from the MA rating, factors like screen brightness, app usage, and network connectivity can impact battery consumption. It's worth considering those as well. That makes sense. I'll keep those factors in mind while making my decision. Is there anything else I should look out for? Another aspect to consider is the phone's power-saving features. Some models offer battery optimization settings or low-power modes to extend battery life. Ah, that's a great point. Having power-saving features can significantly help in maximizing battery usage. I'll make sure to check that as well. Thank you. You're welcome. It's always important to consider all aspects before making a decision. Battery life is a crucial factor for a seamless smartphone experience. I completely agree. A phone with great features but poor battery life can be frustrating. I appreciate your input in helping me make a well-informed decision.
Lesson 14, Balancing Work and Personal Life Hi Anna, after work, I'll try to sneak in a workout and then relax. How about you? Any plans for the evening? Hi John. That sounds like a great plan. As for me, I'm thinking of catching up on some reading and maybe trying out a new recipe for dinner. That sounds wonderful. It's important to find time for activities that help us unwind and rejuvenate after a long day at work. How do you manage to balance your personal life with your professional responsibilities? Finding a balance between work and personal life can be challenging, but it's essential for our overall well-being. I make it a point to prioritize self-care and plan my schedule accordingly. By setting boundaries and managing my time effectively, I can allocate dedicated slots for both work and personal activities. That's impressive. Setting boundaries and managing time effectively are key strategies for maintaining a healthy work-life balance. It allows us to give our best at work while still having time for ourselves and our loved ones. Absolutely. It's crucial to avoid burnout and ensure that we have time for activities that bring us joy and relaxation. By incorporating these activities into our routine, we can recharge and be more productive in the long run. I couldn't agree more. Engaging in activities such as workouts, hobbies, or spending quality time with loved ones can help us reduce stress and improve our overall well-being. It's important to make time for what matters to us. Definitely. By consciously making time for activities that bring us happiness and fulfillment, we can enhance our work-life balance and lead a more satisfying life overall. It's about finding what works best for us individually. You're absolutely right. Everyone's definition of work-life balance may vary, and it's important to find what works best for us personally. It's about prioritizing our well-being and making conscious choices that align with our values and goals. Precisely. Work-life balance is a continuous process of self-awareness and adaptation. It requires us to periodically assess our priorities and make necessary adjustments to ensure that we are living a fulfilling and balanced life. Well said. It's a lifelong journey of finding harmony between our professional and personal lives. By being mindful of our choices and making intentional efforts, we can create a sustainable and fulfilling work-life balance. Absolutely. It's a journey we must embark on and continue to navigate throughout our lives. By staying attuned to our needs and making conscious choices, we can achieve a sense of equilibrium and lead a more fulfilling life overall. Thank you for sharing your insights. It's always valuable to exchange ideas and learn from one another's experiences. Let's continue to prioritize our well-being and strive for a healthy work-life balance. Lesson 15, Travel Planning Tips Hi Anna, I've been thinking about planning my next vacation. Do you have any recommendations on how to find good deals online, or should I consider using a travel agent? Hi John. Planning a vacation can be exciting. When it comes to finding good deals, both online platforms and travel agents have their advantages. It depends on your preferences and the level of convenience you seek. That makes sense. I appreciate the convenience of online platforms, but I'm also open to exploring the option of a travel agent who can offer personalized assistance. 
What are the benefits of using a travel agent? Using a travel agent can be beneficial. They have access to exclusive deals and discounts, and their expertise can help you navigate through various options. They can also provide recommendations based on your preferences and budget. That sounds great. Having someone with expertise guiding me through the planning process and ensuring I get the best deals is definitely appealing. On the other hand, what advantages do online platforms offer? Online platforms offer convenience and flexibility. You have the freedom to explore multiple options at your own pace and compare prices. Additionally, many websites provide customer reviews and ratings to help you make informed decisions. I see. The ability to compare prices and read reviews directly on the online platforms is indeed advantageous. It allows for more independent decision-making. Are there any tips you can share for finding good deals online? Certainly. When searching for deals online, it's essential to be flexible with your travel dates and destinations. Setting up price alerts and browsing incognito mode can also help you find the best prices. Additionally, booking in advance or during off-peak seasons can yield significant savings. Those are valuable tips. Being flexible with travel dates and destinations opens up more possibilities, and using price alerts in incognito mode can help me stay informed and avoid price fluctuations. I'll keep that in mind. Are there any precautions to take when booking online? Absolutely. It's crucial to verify the credibility of the website or platform before making any payments. Look for secure payment options and read the terms and conditions carefully. It's also advisable to purchase travel insurance to protect yourself against unforeseen circumstances. Thank you for the advice. Checking the credibility of the website, ensuring secure payment options, and having travel insurance are important aspects of booking online. I'll make sure to be diligent in these areas. Is there anything else I should consider? One more thing to consider is to compare prices across multiple platforms. Different websites may offer different deals, so it's beneficial to explore various options before making a final decision. Additionally, don't hesitate to reach out to customer support if you have any questions or concerns. That's a great point. Comparing prices across different platforms allows me to make an informed decision and potentially find better deals. I'll take the time to research and compare before making any final bookings. Thank you for all your insights. You're welcome. I'm glad I could help. Remember, whether you decide to go with online platforms or a travel agent, the key is to plan ahead, stay informed, and make choices that suit your preferences and budget. Enjoy your vacation planning. Thank you. I appreciate your guidance and support. I'm excited to begin my vacation planning journey and find the best deals. Here's to a memorable and well-planned vacation. Until our next conversation. Lesson 16, Making a Positive Impact Hi Anna, I've been reflecting on the positive impact I've made on the company. It's important to strive for continuous improvement, isn't it? Hi John. Absolutely. Reflecting on our accomplishments and the positive changes we've brought to the company can be motivating. 
it's essential to recognize the value of our contributions and continue to seek growth. I couldn't agree more. Acknowledging our achievements helps boost our confidence and encourages us to set new goals. It's a great strategy for personal and professional development. Definitely. Celebrating our successes and leveraging them as stepping stones for future growth is a powerful approach. It allows us to build on our strengths and make an even greater impact. That's a great perspective. Building on our strengths is a key component of personal and professional growth. It enables us to make continuous progress and contribute positively to the company's success. Absolutely. By focusing on our strengths and leveraging them in our work, we can make a meaningful difference. It's about maximizing our potential and finding ways to add value. I completely agree. Maximizing our potential and adding value to our work is crucial. It allows us to make a positive impact and contribute to the overall success of the company. Definitely. Each individual's contribution plays a significant role in the company's success. When we strive for excellence and bring our best to the table, it creates a collective positive impact. You're absolutely right. When everyone in the company is committed to excellence and focused on making a positive impact, it creates a culture of success and drives the organization forward. Precisely. A culture that values continuous improvement and recognizes the positive impact of its employees fosters innovation and growth. It's important for companies to nurture such an environment. I couldn't agree more. Nurturing a culture of continuous improvement and recognizing the positive impact of employees is a win-win situation. It benefits both the company and the individuals involved. Absolutely. It's a symbiotic relationship where the company thrives through the contributions of its employees, and the employees grow and develop in a supportive and appreciative environment. Well said. When both the company and its employees benefit from each other's success, it creates a positive cycle of growth and achievement. It's a testament to the importance of making a positive impact. Indeed. Making a positive impact is not only beneficial for the company, but also personally fulfilling. It allows us to leave a lasting impression and contribute meaningfully to our professional journey. Thank you for sharing your insights. Reflecting on the positive impact we make and striving for continuous improvement is a valuable mindset to cultivate. Here's to making an even greater impact in the future. Until our next conversation. Lesson 17, Payment Options Hi Anna, I've been looking into trying out a new restaurant. Do you know if they accept credit cards or only cash? Hi John. That's a great question. It's always a good idea to check the accepted payment options before visiting a new place. Let me find out for you. Thank you. I appreciate your help. It's important to know in advance whether I need to carry cash or if I can conveniently use my credit card. You're welcome. I just checked, and they accept both credit cards and cash. So, you have the flexibility to choose your preferred payment method. That's great news. 
Having the option to use either credit cards or cash gives me more convenience and flexibility. It's always nice to have choices. Absolutely. Having multiple payment options allows for a smoother and more convenient transaction. It's a good practice for businesses to cater to different preferences. I agree. By accepting both credit cards and cash, the restaurant is accommodating a wider range of customers and making their dining experience more convenient. Definitely. Accepting credit cards is especially beneficial for customers who prefer not to carry cash or have a limited amount on hand. It provides a secure and convenient way to make payments. That's true. Credit cards offer added security and convenience. Plus, they allow customers to track their expenses and earn rewards or cash back on their purchases. Absolutely. Credit cards can provide additional benefits, such as rewards programs and purchase protection. It's important to use them responsibly and pay off the balance on time. I completely agree. Responsible credit card usage is key to maximizing the benefits and avoiding unnecessary debt. It's important to stay on top of payments and manage expenses wisely. Wise financial management is essential. It's always a good idea to budget and plan your expenses, regardless of the payment method you choose. Being mindful of your spending helps maintain financial stability. That's great advice. Budgeting and planning are crucial for maintaining financial stability and making informed decisions. It's a valuable skill to develop and practice. Absolutely. Developing good financial habits and making informed decisions about payment methods contribute to overall financial well-being. It's an essential aspect of personal finance. I couldn't agree more. Being mindful of our financial choices and understanding the different payment options available to us allows us to make informed decisions and manage our finances effectively. Well said. Making informed decisions about payment methods is part of our financial responsibility. It ensures we have a smooth and convenient experience while also keeping our financial goals in mind. Thank you for your insights. Your information about the restaurant's payment options and the importance of financial responsibility is valuable. I'll keep that in mind as I plan my visit. Until our next conversation. Lesson 18, Local Experiences Hi Anna, have you ever had a memorable lifetime experience during your travels? Did you try any local specialties that left a lasting impression? Hi John. Absolutely. Traveling provides incredible opportunities to have unique and memorable experiences. Trying local specialties is one of the best ways to immerse yourself in the culture and create lasting memories. That's fascinating. I believe trying local food is an essential part of exploring a new place. It allows us to connect with the local culture and indulge in authentic flavors. Definitely. Food is a universal language that brings people together. Trying local dishes not only satisfies our taste buds, but also opens doors to understanding the traditions and customs of a place. I couldn't agree more. It's the perfect way to explore the culinary heritage of a destination. 
local ingredients and cooking techniques often create unique and delightful flavors. Absolutely. Each region has its own culinary treasures, and trying them adds a new dimension to our travel experiences. It's like embarking on a delicious adventure. That sounds exciting. Do you have any specific local specialties that you tried and loved? I'm curious to know about your culinary adventures. Oh, certainly. During my trip to Thailand, I had the opportunity to try authentic pad thai, a popular local dish. The combination of flavors, from the tanginess of tamarind to the freshness of herbs, was simply incredible. That sounds amazing. Pad Thai is a classic Thai dish known for its vibrant flavors. It's fascinating how a single dish can capture the essence of a country's culinary traditions. Absolutely. It's like a culinary ambassador, representing the diversity and richness of a culture. Trying it made me appreciate the skill and artistry that goes into creating such flavors. That's wonderful. Exploring local cuisines not only introduces us to new taste sensations but also teaches us about the history and heritage of a place. It's a feast for the senses and the mind. Definitely. Food is deeply intertwined with a place's identity and history. By experiencing local specialties, we gain a deeper understanding of the local traditions and the people behind the dishes. I completely agree. It's like taking a journey through the flavors and stories of a destination. Each bite carries with it a piece of the culture and leaves a lasting impression. Precisely. That's why I always make it a point to try local specialties wherever I go. It's a chance to create cherished memories and connect with the heart and soul of a place. Thank you for sharing your experiences. Your stories about trying local specialties have inspired me to explore the culinary delights of the places I visit. I'm excited to embark on my own flavorful adventures. Until our next conversation. Lesson 19, Healthy Eating. Hi Anna, are you also watching your diet? I've been trying to make healthier choices lately. Hi John. Absolutely. Taking care of our health is important. And one way to do that is by being mindful of what we eat. I've also been making an effort to eat healthier and cut down on processed foods. That's great to hear. Processed foods can be convenient, but they often lack the nutrients our bodies need. It's important to focus on whole, unprocessed foods for a balanced diet. Definitely. Whole foods provide us with essential vitamins, minerals, and fiber, while processed foods are typically high in added sugars, unhealthy fats, and artificial ingredients. It's important to prioritize nutrient-dense options. I couldn't agree more. By choosing nutrient-dense foods, we nourish our bodies and support our overall well-being. It's all about making conscious choices for a healthier lifestyle. Absolutely. It's not about restrictive diets or deprivation, but rather finding a balanced approach that works for us. It's about nourishing our bodies while still enjoying the foods we love. That's a great perspective. It's all about finding a sustainable and enjoyable way to eat healthy. 
It's about making small changes over time that can have a big impact on our health. Precisely. Small changes can add up to significant improvements in our overall health. It's about making gradual adjustments and building healthy habits that last. I completely agree. Building healthy habits takes time and consistency. It's important to be patient with ourselves and focus on progress rather than perfection. Absolutely. Progress is what matters most. Each step we take towards a healthier diet is a step towards a better and more vibrant life. That's inspiring. Making healthier food choices not only benefits our physical health but also positively impacts our mental and emotional well-being. It's a holistic approach to self-care. Definitely. Our food choices affect every aspect of our lives. When we fuel our bodies with nourishing foods, we feel more energized, focused, and ready to take on the day. I couldn't agree more. It's amazing how food can influence our overall well-being. It's a reminder that what we eat matters and has a profound impact on our health. Lesson 20, Car Rental Hi Anna, I need to travel next week. That sounds reasonable. Can I reserve a car for my trip? Hi John. Absolutely. Renting a car can be a convenient and flexible option for your travels. I can help you with that. Where will you be traveling to? I'll be traveling to Los Angeles. I have a few meetings and would like to explore the city during my free time. Having a car would give me the freedom to move around easily. That's a great idea. Having a car will definitely make it easier for you to get around and explore different parts of the city. Let me check the availability and options for you. Thank you. I appreciate your help. I'm looking for a compact or midsize car that is fuel efficient. Do you have any recommendations? Sure. I can certainly help you find a car that meets your preferences. Fuel efficiency is a good consideration, especially for longer trips. Let me check the available options for you. That would be great. I also need the car for about a week. Can you let me know the rental rates and any additional fees that I should be aware of? Of course. I'll provide you with all the necessary information. It's important to be aware of any additional fees, such as insurance coverage or mileage limits. I'll make sure to give you a comprehensive quote. Thank you. I appreciate your attention to detail. Also, do you know if there are any specific requirements or documents that I need to bring when picking up the car? Absolutely. Typically, you'll need a valid driver's license, a credit card for the rental deposit, and proof of insurance. It's always a good idea to check the specific requirements with the rental company as they may vary. That's good to know. I'll make sure to have all the necessary documents ready. Once I have the details and rates from you, I'll finalize the reservation. That sounds like a plan. I'll gather all the information and send it to you by email. If you have any further questions or need assistance, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much.
your assistance is greatly appreciated. I feel more confident knowing that I have your support in arranging the car rental for my trip. Lesson 21, Travel Tips and Advice Hi Anna, I just read a clever travel tip that I'm excited to try on my next trip. Do you have any other advice for traveling? Hi John. I'd love to hear the clever tip you found. And yes, I have a few more travel tips up my sleeve. Let's exchange advice. So, the tip I found suggests rolling clothes instead of folding them to save space in the suitcase. It seems like a practical idea. That's a great tip. Rolling clothes not only saves space, but also helps to minimize wrinkles. I always use that technique too. It's good to know that it's a tried and tested method. What other advice do you have for making travel more convenient? One of my top tips is to pack a small travel-sized toiletry kit with essentials like shampoo, toothpaste, and moisturizer. It saves space and ensures you have what you need. That's a smart idea. It's much more convenient than carrying full-sized bottles. I'll definitely include a travel-sized kit in my packing list. Another tip is to have a photocopy of important documents, like your passport and travel insurance. Keep them separate from the originals in case of loss or theft. That's a valuable precaution. I'll make sure to have copies stored safely in my luggage. It's always better to be prepared for unexpected situations. Absolutely. Being prepared can save you a lot of stress and hassle. Oh, and don't forget to pack a universal adapter for your electronic devices. Good point. Different countries have different types of power outlets, so a universal adapter will ensure I can charge my devices anywhere. Exactly. It's a small item that can make a big difference in staying connected and charged during your travels. I appreciate all these travel tips. They're practical and will definitely make my trips more enjoyable and stress-free. You're welcome. I'm glad you find them helpful. Traveling should be an exciting adventure, and these tips can enhance your experience. That's true. I'm looking forward to applying these tips and exploring new places with ease. Thanks again. No problem. Have a fantastic time on your next trip. Safe travels and enjoy every moment. I will. Thank you. I'll make sure to share my experiences when I return. Until then, take care.